Hi friends! I've been planning so hard for this video and I'm really excited about it. Uh, today I want to talk about creating meaningful photos. Every day I walk out my door I hope I can create a meaningful photo. And half the time I don't, but I continue to try and try and try. Drink your water, it's good for you. Now I believe that meaning is found in a box. I've been looking for that. So let me uh, unbox that for you. <laughs> Creativity thrives best when it's in a box, when you put boundaries around it. And meaningful creations are just uh, creativity manifested with a purpose behind it. I think a great analogy is um, graphic design. I, I love to design. I love to graphically design things. You hand me a piece of paper and like tell tell me to draw something, and it's gonna it's not gonna work. The paper is gonna be ripped in half and caught on fire and things like that. And it's all gonna happen because I was trying to write with a pen. It's just not good. But I can open up Photoshop and have fun. And After Effects, motion graphics. What what? Woo! So what will happen as a graphic designer? is you will open your software or your paper, sit your paper down or whatever you do, clay, I don't know, and you will sit there and go, what the heck am I doing? You'll just stare at a blank canvas for hours and hours and maybe draw a line and then go, I don't, I don't know what to do next. That is because you're essentially giving, given infinity to, <laughs> to create with. Uh, you throw a client in the mix with a graphic designer and they come to you and say, I have a company. My company's name is The Pink Horse and I want it to have a very cursive like look on the text. And the creation process begins and chugs forward, sometimes not easily, but <laughs> it, it starts happening. So the point is, is when you put, when you confine yourself, that's where creativity thrives. When you when you, in a sense, funnel your focus. That's how the mind most efficiently creates. So how do we create a box for ourselves? Well, we focus uh, with our gear. We focus with the kind of photography we pursue. Maybe we subsection out different parts of our photography at a time instead of trying to do everything at once. But most importantly, and this is where the meaning part comes in, we focus um, our goals. We get intentional and focused about our goals. So let me give you some examples. First example is, I'm out of focus! So the first example is one of my photos. It uh, was a photo that I took a while back outside of a Waffle House. There was um, a girl that was working there and she was on break and I took her photo and basically up under the photo, it's on my photo blog, up under the photo the caption just says single mom. And I'm so proud of that photo. That photo really means a lot to me. The reason that photo happened was because I made a list of photo goals that I wanted to achieve. And one of them was very specifically a worker on break outside of Waffle House. That, <laughs> that was my goal. And so I pursued that goal. Because of that, I came out with that photo. I was like so incredibly nervous <laughs> to, to approach uh, the girl and, and to take the photo and just that whole thing. I was sitting in my car just like looking at looking out the mirror like I need to do this. I need to do this. I don't want to do this. I need to do this. <laughs> but, um, but that goal pushed me forward. Everyone say hi to Christina. This is my girlfriend. Hi. She's incredibly hot. I'm <laughs> not right now. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're always hot. I'm eating icing. Yeah. Um. Okay, bye. <laughs> Why'd you do that? <laughs> yeah! I did not look good. You look great. What are you talking about? My hair looks crazy. You're crazy. So that's a photo that I would consider meaningful. Uh, another example that I really, um, this is what I'm actually, what I'm really excited about with this video. Uh, Jeremy Cowart, my favorite photographer. Uh, I don't know if you've, well, I, oh man, there's a toss up. No, he is my favorite photographer. Second is Humans of New York, but anyway, for Jeremy Cowart, my favorite photographer, <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of him, he's, he's a big deal, um, he did a photo series in Haiti called Voices, 
Voices of Haiti. This project that he did was an incredible, beautiful, perfect illustration of what I'm talking about. About a week after the earthquake, he decided to go over to Haiti uh, with his camera and basically see what the thoughts of the people were who were affected by this earthquake in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. In the midst of all the statistics uh, and everything that you, you see on the news, he simply wanted to know what the people, the individuals of Port-au-Prince were feeling in, in this time. And out of that is, came some amazingly beautiful moving photos. Um, and I'm gonna link uh, to the video that, about this project. And I'm, if you're on my website, um, I'm gonna just put it up under this video. So scroll down videos in my pants. Now this project really touches me because, uh, one, because I've been to Haiti twice, I'm very passionate about it, and two, um, it's it's just such an incredible, huge, um, perfect epitome of a project, uh, one of which, of similarity, <laughs> I hope to be a part of one day. That was epic. That was an amazing sentence. So this uh, very nicely transitions me into my next point of inspiration. You, you have to stay inspired. And um, and this is uh, something that can go back to over and over and it inspires me. I was watching the video while I was kind of preparing for this video today. And uh, just overwhelmed with emotion just watching this video over again. I You know, in thinking about it, I kind of decided that I, I think an amazing way to approach this whole process from inspiration to creation is to think of it in the sense of a funnel. So you have a, a, a very, you know, it's like old motor oil funnels. <laughs> you have a very broad opening at the top for inspiration where you pour in all kinds of stuff. Let your inspiration be from all over the place. Um, I've been really looking at um, paintings from um, Salvador Dali. He has a really long name, but that's the short name. Uh, and he, if you've ever seen his stuff, or if you haven't, whatever, he was a painter, uh, and the stuff he created was very surreal, surrealist, kind of, you know, dark, uh, conceptual craziness. He's, he's famous for the melted clock painting. Totally um, far from my street photography, uh, I, I would imagine. So let broad inspiration flow in, right? But let it funnel down to a very narrow uh creative process and a very narrow end and put your purpose and your passion find out what you're passionate about and put that into it and that is how you create meaningful photos you guys have a wonderful day i love you go create something meaningful and awesome and drink lots of coffee and drink lots of water i've finished both gold can plate i'm amazing bye Bye. She says it's fine. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> okay. Ow. <laughs> I can't photography no more. <laughs> That's horrible. Christina, how do you create meaningful photos? Um, I go like this. You always got to you, you do it like that. And then I use afterlight. And then I use rust mostly. I And then I bring the shadows up because that's what James told me to do. And it makes them look really cool and professional. And then I post them on Instagram. Oh, I'm sorry. And then I also use ViscoCam. I use T1 because it's one that I like a lot. Unless I'm going for a black and white feel, which is really emotional. So then I use T1. And then I go into Instagram and I post it with a nice, you know, catchy little title. And then I hashtag Afterlight and then ViscoCam hashtags. And then I get so many likes. I'm cooler than James on Instagram. <laughs> So forget everything I just said. Go with that. <laughs> Get out of my room. Okay. Love you. I didn't really leave. <laughs> I want to watch Dr. Phil now. <laughs> okay, everybody watch Dr. Phil. Goodbye. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Marital problems. What? What?